What's going on, guys? You gotta stay inside. This isn't the Gino installs the rack video. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Weston Smith coming at you. I gotta rotate this filter because it's about to get real bright. I'm rocking that ND filter by Peter McKinnon. Anyways, that's besides the point. We are turning STI today into the ultimate fishing machine. And so what we've got is a Yakima roof rack, which is right here. We've got the crossbars. We're gonna show you guys the install today. We've got the big catch, which is a fishing kayak saddle. So you can put your kayak on top of the STI. It's gonna be nuts. And newly released, we have the top water. This is an eight rod and reel combo carrier for the top of your vehicle. I doubt anybody has put this thing on top of a Subaru STI yet, so we might be one of the first. You guys are gonna have to stick around, stay tuned. First things we need to do is get some hedge trimmers because our bushes look retarded. Second thing we gotta do is move the Tundra and the Camaro out of the driveway and garage so we've got enough room to knock this thing out. So let's get to it. Please note the Toyota's amazing efficiency. First vehicle's out of the way. Now we gotta get the garage door opener. Second car is now moved. Last step is just scooting the STI kind of over to the middle. That way we've got a little bit more room to work on it. So we have the key. Let's get her done. Should do it. Let's get into it. All right. Let's get the stuff out of the packaging and find the uh, instruction manuals. I might have to consult YouTube here in a second to get the stuff put together. Where is this instruction manual? I don't know if it's in this box or this box. Let's go ahead and figure this thing out. Okay. So in the first box we have the base clips. We have the towers. Sweet. But I don't see any instructions. Let's check the next box. Here are the bars, and we got a bunch of clips or harnesses of some sort. Interesting. Okay. What's next? Where's the instructions? I was shipped one set of BC-125s and one set of BC-127s. Got the base clips figured out. The 127s go on the front, the 125s go on the rear. Next step, we got to clean where we're going to be applying the roof rack. Let's start wiping this thing off. Get this nice and clean. And then I'll come back with the microfiber to dry her down. This side's looking good. Let's dry off the other. Right, so we got some more stuff out of the packaging. Here's the bars. These ones, they actually show you which way to face them as far as what's forwards and backwards because they have these non-rounded bars have an aerodynamic shape. And so this way is going to be, it's tough to explain, but there's an obvious direction that is it's towards the front of the vehicle. There's a tool specific to Yakima that we're going to be using to tighten these towers down onto the bars to get things started and then I think we'll place it on top of the car and we'll make those final adjustments. So inside the box they actually include a tape measure which can be utilized which is going to be utilized along with that one tool that you'll need. So Alright guys, so now that I'm on the fourth one, I'm kind of getting the hang of it. Let's get a quick rundown of everything we've done so far. We're taking off that tower bracket. I don't think that's what it's called, but then we pull out that tab right there. You then have your seat and the adapter that comes with it. It's going to be packaged together, so you just leave that one little adapter out. You've got just the seat. You pop it in here until you hear that click. And then what you want to do is you want to set the adapter onto that bolt right there. And then you tighten it down from the underside, utilizing that tool they provide until this becomes flush. The silver piece becomes flush with the legs on that seat. So we're going to we're going to do this together now. Tighten, tighten, tighten and see how it sits up just about it's sitting just about flush with these other two elevated pieces. In fact, I might have went a little too far, so I'll even just loosen it up a tad. Loosen it up just a hair. Now we're nice and flush and even. That's where you want to be. And so that's every step we've done so far. Next step is you get your bars out and you got to remove the rubber from the underside. It's telling us the concave side. And so we're going to go ahead and take this strip out. That was simple enough. Hopefully reinstall is just as easy. And now we're going to slide these towers on. So we're going to start from this side. And this is why it's important to have these things all level. So every little piece falls into place. And uh, first time installer here, I just assume you beat it up. Got the rubber pushed down, now boom. 
that looks like the first fairly completed bar. But on these newer bars, they include measurements. So you can see exactly where you need to be. For us, we need to measure 37 and a half inches from the center and that's gonna be what's appropriate for our STI, but it's laid out in this uh, sheet here for every vehicle with your base clips. So we need to go ahead and get our towers and scoot them to 37 and a half inches. Okay, we got the towers where we need them, 37 and a half inches based on the scale here. Now we are going to tighten these down until you hear three clicks, and that's the proper torque for these uh, bars. You don't need any power tools. Let's see if we can't hear these things. One, two, three. So three clicks. Now that thing's tightened and secured, let's get this other side. Flawless. Now it says adjust the measurement and pitch angle of the towers on the rear crossbar. So now we're gonna skip over to the rear crossbar and it looks like the measurement for the rears on our vehicle, the Subaru STI is going to be 35 and 3 eighths. So let's slide this down 35 and 3 eighths, bam to loosen or tighten your bars from your towers, there's this little clip that you can close on the back side. That's what they have you open early on in the installation. That's just another theft deterrent. So now we can tighten this thing up that we've got it at that 35 and 3 eighths. There we go. Now let's do the same for this side. Next up guys is just applying these pads to your towers here. So they just kind of go on upside down with these edges facing outward and you'll hear just a one click pop and boom, they're secured on there, and this tower is just about ready to go. Guys, we're now applying the weather stripping that seal back in. Uh, they say to cut the insides with an extra inch, that way you can kind of tuck a little piece of rubber underneath each end here. So you'll set that on the inside of one of these towers, then you'll measure it out, and you wanna give yourself an extra inch. That way we've got a little excess that we can tuck under each tower, just a little bit. There we go. Now bring this all the way down, and you'll see I have a little excess, so we're gonna tuck that underneath here. Boom, there you have it. The weather strip is tucked under about a half inch under each tower, so you've got a good seal. Now we're gonna hit the outer edges, and then we'll be just about done. On the weather stripping on the outer edge of the tower, you actually want to leave a little bit of space, about an inch here, because that's where this goes, the end cap. So let's get, this is the wrong one. Let's get our end cap on here now, and that completes this side. Boom fully sealed. Fully assembled, we've already got the back bar on. Let's go ahead and get the front bar set up here and then we'll check our measurements. We're now breaking out the tape measure for the first time today and the measurement is seven and seven eighth inches from the windshield to the front bar. So we're looking pretty good right off the bat. And that measurement is to the front of the pad here. So seven and seven eighth inches. All right, we just got the front bar fully tightened down. Now the second measurement is gonna be from the front to the rear uh, bar, and then we'll get that thing tightened down and we'll show you the whole process on that second one now that we've got it done. Guys, the front tower is in place. The secondary is not there yet, so we're gonna measure the M4 distance, which for our vehicle 2015 Subaru STI is 30 and 1 8 inches from the front of this bar to the front of this bar. So let's see where we're at here. 30 and 1 8th. There we go. So here's the distance. Now what we do is we open this panel here, click that cover open, open your car door, and we actually pop this clip, we slide this clip right in there until it pops. Just measured 30 and an eighth from the front of this bar to this one as well. Now let's go ahead and open that panel, pop our clip in there. So now we've got both pieces in place, but what we need to do is uh, we, we loosely tightened that one just to where it's snug, but uh, not tightened. Now we're gonna tighten this side up to where it's, now that's snug. And this is the, one of these is called the drive bolt, one of them is the other, I forget. And uh, you'll get those three clicks on both of these as well. So since we've already got that side fairly tightened, we're just gonna go ahead and crank this one down. So you're gonna go until you hear those three clicks. Uh, this one takes a second, gotta really crank it down but it really helps get that seal good onto the car and the roof so you have nothing to worry about when you're cruising down the road with your potentially kayak and eight full combos, right? That's two and three. Now we got this guy right here, same deal. Three clicks, one, two, three. 
can probably close that now. We've tightened everything down, we've closed up that box there. We are now applying the tower covers. And boom, just like that, everything is put together. Check this thing out from start to finish, the roof rack installation. This thing, give it the good old test. Apparently this thing's supposed to hold uh, 165 pounds, so it's probably good enough to hold me. I think we're good. About 150 pounds. Oh, but wait, there's more. We still got the rod and reel carrier. We're definitely gonna get this thing on top of the car, stock it with some rod and reels, and maybe go uh, hit some ponds later, I don't know. <laughs> This is the brand new Topwater rod and reel case or carrier. Holds up to eight fully rigged combos. It kind of keeps them suspended so they're not getting jarred around and everything. Comes with a key to lock this puppy up. And we're gonna put this thing on top of the roof rack and we're gonna use it on all our fishing adventures. And real quick, we just wanna thank you, Kima, because everything in this video was actually supplied by them for free for us to install and utilize. So we cannot thank them enough for that. We just reached out to them through DM and different emails. Uh, trying to see if you know they trade some product for pictures and video on social media. Tell them we're building an outdoor and fishing channel and they were thrilled to go ahead and send us some of these new products. So I can't wait to put a kayak on top of this thing with these rod and reels and go hit some ponds. This should be fun. People are gonna love seeing this cruise down the street. I don't know if we're gonna put it on the driver's side or the passenger side yet. That's kind of the biggest debate at the moment. But we opened it up using that key that comes provided and it's just like a soft open and it stays open for you and it closes nice and smooth. This thing is pretty sick and I can already see how it works. It's got these uh, essentially large rubber bands that you loosen, you set your rod and reels in here and you can have eight fully rigged combos inside the box. But we have our installation instructions and our hardware. So we'll get this thing on the car and then we'll show you the finished product here shortly. Okay guys, the install on this is actually very simple. So it comes with this plate that you put inside of the box. You can see it can slide around based on where you want to place this on your bars. And we've positioned it as far off to the side as we think is necessary, just right along that driver's window. And so all you really get is this right here and that plate. And you just loosen these suckers off. Then you go from the bottom of your rack. And so you're underneath and you end up sliding it up through. And then you'll see this right here. It comes up through that plate. And then literally all you do is you tighten these down and you're good to go. That is all there is to the top water. There's only two of these mounts. I've got one already tightened down and then there's this one right here. And then the last step is we have some screw covers you'll see inside of here. We got those tops of the screws covered just so that there's less corrosion or rust over time. So you can see we've got those placed on there already. Super pumped, the roof rack is on the car, it looks sick. We got the top water on there and now we're going with the big catch. This is the fishing kayak saddles. It's essentially these four pieces that you're just gonna put on those bars and your kayak will rest on there and then you see you can tie it down to that rack. Let's go ahead and get these things on top of the car and call it a day. First impressions are these things don't mess around. I thought, I thought from the picture they looked a little smaller, which is fine by me because we got those big kayaks like I'm saying. So they're nice and padded right here. We're going to get them mounted up on there on the bars and it, it looks, I might be wrong, but it kind of looks like they almost supply you with like a tie down in case you want to use it for your kayak already so you don't have to go out and purchase them. So this thing's got everything you need. Let's get the stuff on the car. The installation on these things is very simple. Let me break it down on this next one right over here. So basically all you do, we're just going to crank this thing for a while. Okay, now once you get this thing pretty loose, what you're going to do is you'll realize you can push it through and you can just twist this piece here and it will, it will pop out. So now you've got that latch open so you can put that on your rack. For our jet stream bars, you can pop this out now. And so I put it on this second slot down. So if you're using these jet stream bars on your uh, rack, then that second one down seems to be quite appropriate. So I'm gonna go ahead and latch this on now. I'm just gonna put this on just like this. We now push this piece up from the bottom and you twist that little knob on the bottom so it locks in. And now you just tighten it down and get it nice and centered. You can position it wherever you would like for your kayak. And uh, we may have to adjust these slightly when we put the yak on it, but it's just gonna be as simple as loosening this knob and then retightening a little bit. Oh yeah, this is gonna be sweet, man. I'm excited. Thank you guys for watching our installation video. We'll catch you on the next one.